this project is going to be open source, so I'm going to make it available. So I'll publish the code, which includes all the wiring information. So I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to build a little project. I've actually got a piece of test career which I need to fix. It's the HP 3561A, and that's got a bad RAM module. And I ordered a RAM tester from eBay over a month ago. It hasn't arrived yet. I've also just ordered a Retro Chip Tester Pro. That will probably be at least two weeks before it arrives, maybe longer. So I'm actually going to make myself a little RAM tester. I found some code online from another video which somebody else had done, I made one as well. So I was like, this is the third generation of their code. So I'm actually going to be modifying that code and I'm going to do some changes to that and make it a little bit better. It's quite good code that's already there, it's already pretty good, but I can add something to that. So I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to make a simple little ball like this, I'm going to have a chip here which you test. I'm only going to be testing two different kinds of chips, the 4164s and the 4864s, the only DRAM I'm going to be trying to test. I'm not doing anything other than that, unless it's in our chips which are pink compatible. Oh, this is an old Perf board I had from a previous project which I'm just reusing. It's a little Adreno Pro Mini. My plan is to also put on an OLED. So I'm going to have a push button to do the test and the OLED screen. The OLED is obviously the biggest upgrade to this because before it's just LED indicators and it's like, well, okay, that's kind of right, but sometimes you want more information than that. So I'm going to put an OLED on it. I've only just started laying out. I'm just thinking I'm, I've got the layout kind of right. This board will cut the size once I've finalised it, but I've got a pretty good idea. It's basically going to be coming up to here, I think. I'm going to solder these together now and we'll start assembling. So I don't have all the details figured out, not yet. I've got the concept in mind. This is going to be flux. It's going to get messier. Don't want to use flux unless you actually need to. Sometimes you have to, it's just the way it is. It's definitely working a lot better now. I might actually increase the temperature slightly so I can get on there for less time. It's based on somebody else's code which I've seen working in a video, so pretty confident it works. I mean, I've looked at the code and it seems to make sense, so I think it's okay. And what I'll probably do as well is open source this because I don't care, I'm not planning on sitting any of these things or all that. I think I'll just open source it, it's a pretty simple little thing. Make it available. I might even design a PCB actually. Let's do this one here, just manually, then maybe I'll design a PCB and maybe revisit it later on. Could be an idea, eh? Actually makes you think, maybe I should put some female headers on this board so I can just unplug this thing once I'm actually done with it. And then transport it to a new circuit board once I actually design one. So the reason I'm doing it like this is to make sure that all the headers line up. That way you know they're definitely going to line up with the board and it's all going to be good. Because if you don't do it this way then they might be slightly wonky and a bit out of kilter and that sort of stuff and you just don't quite get the same effect that you want. So I'm just going to try and get the flux off this board now. Get the worst of it off and I'll have to wash it. I'll come back. Also don't forget to click like and subscribe if you like this kind of thing too. I've got a bunch of these boards cheaply on AliExpress, as you do, and the regular one, it doesn't actually work. It's, uh, it's supposed to allow dropping down to 5 volts using the raw input, where you get a 3cc output of 5 volts. It doesn't work. Now, something I picked up a little while ago was some replacement regulators. So what I actually might do is swap this one out while I'm at it, and put the new one on there, because it does need changing. It's probably the correct one. I haven't tried just yet. I mean, I've got them for this purpose because I knew I've got a bunch of these balls which have bad regulators. Assuming, of course, this regulator even works. So we'll just change it out now and um, we'll do that one too. Now I've cleaned the board up and put some flux back on. Just a tiny little bit. And we'll hot air it. Don't so much to get them off. Off. It is a bit too high. Maybe it wasn't blocking the camera at the time. So that's a big layer of range. Yeah. Hopefully straight. Hopefully it works. So I put some headers on the Arduino. It's a Pro Mini by the way. Now it's going to solder this in. So I've got to do a few things. I could actually be lazy and not put any kind of protection on it. But I think I'm going to put some resistors in series. I'm not sure yet. I mean, I could do it without them, actually, because this is only a temporary thing. But I would say to put resistors in series to uh, offer protection. So this is a pre-used board, so it's got a few quirks with it. 
which I have to look out for. Actually, I get tempted to use my other solder actually. Instead of using my silver solder, I might use this one. It's got a bit more flux in it, might make it a bit more forgiving. The hardware are clean. Really, this tip's a bit small for what I'm doing here. But I'm being a bit lazy, I can't bother changing it. So you go, I've done quite a bit since the last bit of recording I did. Uh, all resistors populated, obviously the Reno's all done, screens on there, and there's tiny little 0.96 inch screens. Really good little screens these, they're really small but they actually have quite a good detail on them so they're really good. And this sort of process I means it's going to be basically a pass fail kind of thing. So it doesn't really need to display much anyway, so it's fine. Little button there, I've got a buck converter here, some 805 equivalent. Handy little things those, don't put out much heat so you know, and I've got some bodges on the back here, well not really bodges but I had to plan for these because of the size of the board, in fact I already had slots on that, I um, I basically bridged straight from those pins to these pins here, so where I've got bridges across, I've used resistors to bridge, so these are 180 ohm resistors, these blue ones, they're just for there for protection, so there's three pins which aren't protected because they go basically straight across to the Arduino, and I could have cut the tracks underneath and then bridged across over here with resistors, but I haven't bothered. I thought oh, we just have three pins which aren't protected and just have it there. I've got something there. Just to protect the power supply in case it's got a dead short across it, it should actually help to protect the supply, so it should help to take some pressure off that just as a precaution. I haven't tested anything yet. I've cleaned up a bit, but it's not perfect. I may cut this edge off yet. I'm not sure what I'm going to do as far as a connection for the power supply and that sort of stuff. I'm not deciding that yet. I'll have to look and see what I've actually got. I've got someone to plug in a power adapter into it or not. I haven't finished the software for this either so if I'm in display I haven't finished that. I've done the code to handle the inputs and outputs, that's done, but I haven't added the code in yet for the OLED display so I need to do that and obviously handle the display functions. I'm actually going to be displaying on it. I need to do that but yes it's probably going to be half an hour of coding or so to get that all finished. Uh, anyway so I think I can probably power it now and just make sure there's no short circuits on the board and all that and just see if this is working check that regulator which I replace see if that's actually working I'm not going to be using it, I'm going to be using this one it's going to power the whole board but I want to replace that one in case I ever change this board for something else down the track and end up using it for something else so I wanted to make sure that regulator is working so I want to power that up now and see if it's actually working or not let's probe into there as well with the ground let's probe onto the VCC pin and apply power to the raw pin 5 volts, great. So that means that little regulator in there is working fine. That's good. So if I now apply power instead to this regulator, 5.06. So both regulators are working, that's all good. Happy with that. Right, finished building it. We've done the firmware, firmware is installed. Haven't tested it fully yet. Have powered up to make sure the display works, stuff like that, but that's all done. Let's power it up and just show you what happens. That's pretty simple. So the screens on these are really good. They're really small screens, but they have really good detail. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. So if I do a test of that and I see in there, you see I've got the D13 LED. That's still enabled. I remapped it to be D13, so it's um, it runs the LED. Each time you push the button, it won't do anything because you have to reset it each time. It locks it on. I might change that actually. So if you push the button, it resets or something. I'm not sure. And of course there's nothing in there, the inputs are floating, so it's going to find stuff all over the place. I might actually change that firmware so each time you push the button it does a retest. Maybe I'll do that. That's a pretty simple fix. Right, I've just been tweaking the programming a little bit and just made it a little bit better. I'm a bit happy with how it works now. Turn the power back on. Right, as you can see I've got a RAM IC in here. This is a 4864P-2. So I've got nine devices all up, all of these off eBay and they look like new old stock, the pins don't look like they've ever been used, they're still splayed out, you have to bend them down to get into the socket and that sort of stuff, so I don't think they've ever been used, they're brand new chips. Let's do a test, don't forget to click like and subscribe. This project is going to be open source, so I'm going to make it available, so I'll publish the code and how to use this thing, which includes all the wiring information inside the code. It's very simple to set up, I mean like this regulator stuff here, 
I mean, this really is optional. You could run out for USB and it will work fine. I've been doing that when I had the programmer hooked up. I was doing testing using the USB port. Absolutely fine. But probably not a good idea if you've got a chip which has got a short on it. If you've got a shorter chip, it might load down the USB port and cause problems. So not recommended. This will at least provide a bit of a buffer. So like I said, all the code and everything, or I'll make it available. I'll probably design a circuit board, actually, and make that available too. So make sure you check out the links down below for those. Patreons will also have access to that, so if you want to become a Patreon, you'll also see that code and stuff in there too. Anything special or that, any like service manuals, things like that, I always give it to my Patreons as well, so they've got actually a downloadable file. Anyway, we'll get on with this. Push the button. So it tells you what it's doing here, it says testing zeros, and it said it's writing before, so it's writing the data to the RAM. Now it's reading it back. Pass, now it's testing ones. It's right into the RAM, now it's reading it back. I've got this updating every fifth column, just for speed. If I, I mean, I'll do every tenth column, so each is slightly faster again, because obviously the display updating is slowing it down. But it's a small compromise to see what the actual update's going on. You know, you see it's doing something. So I think it's a worthwhile trade-off. These aren't particularly big RAM chips, so you know, it's not like it's a major, major issue, but. In this case, I think it doesn't matter too much. But if you really bothered you, you could always change it so it just says reading instead in code. So it goes writing, then reading, and not actually do the updating, that'll make it faster. But I like to show the progress here. Random is a bit slower. There we go, that chip's good. Happy with that. Now one thing I haven't implemented, which I probably should have done, is switching of the power supply for this thing. So right now this is just powered directly off the main rail. There's no switching of the power. Thinking what I maybe should have done is use an output from the Arduino here to switch a PNP transistor or something like that to turn the power on and off to the chip. Okay, future me here. I decided to come back and just do a slight tweak to this ball, just because I couldn't clear it off my conscience. What I've done is I've added a transistor here, which is a 2N3906. That is in series with the power rail for that chip. This is being turned on by the Arduino. So before the Arduino does a test, it turns that transistor on, which turns power onto the chip. There's no power going to the chip until the test starts, and once the test is finished, it turns the power back off again. I think that's a uh, pretty good way of doing it. Right now, that's working quite nicely. You turn the power on and off to the chip. So the power's not on until it goes to the test. Future me here again. Future, future me. I've now designed a circuit board for this project. This is available on PCBWay.com as one of my projects. There'll be a link down below for this. I've also listed us on Patreon and stuff like that for my Patreon supporters. So the files are there with the Gerbers, PCB layout like this, the schematic diagram. As ugly as that is, it's not greatly laid out, but it's practical. I've ordered some of these to be made by PCBWay as a sponsorship, so I'll be getting some of these boards, which I will then do an assembly on and do another video on this in the future. You can order these yourself right now from PCBWay. They're available. You can go to the project page, which is linked down below, and you better get these boards. I will be doing a sponsorship video as I said, feature them in more detail and go through a lot more then. The firmware is also available, every input line to this chip is protected and switchable. When this isn't doing a test it turns the power off completely to that chip. So when this is powered up you're safe to plug and unplug a chip because all the lines are grounded basically. So it's available to get whenever you want. Hackaday be nice, like I said, be good. You feature them there, could use a bit of a boost to the channel. I was hoping to get to 20,000 subscribers by Christmas, didn't make it. Oh maybe I'll get 20,000 by New Year's. Nah I didn't make that either. So I'm not quite there, it's probably going to be at least another month or so away. So make sure you share the video around. If you know anyone on any particular forums or groups where you're doing this retro kind of gear and you've got these RAMs which you need to be testing, then uh, maybe you want to share this with them and just say, hey, you can build your own simple little circuit, you can build it with parts you've got laying around, you can get the boards made or you can just copy what I've done and make your own like I did in the prototype. It works. That was a nice little project. Make sure you click like and subscribe. Maybe post me to Hackaday. That'd be quite nice if Hackaday featured me for once. Oh uh, well, I guess not part of the in crowd. Catch you later.